Good afternoon. Our current global circumstances remind us of the crucial role of creativity, not only for survival, but for sustainability and resilience in good times and in bad. The COVID-19 coronavirus has reminded us how inextricably we are all related and how urgently we need to work together for a collaborative creative response, a creative relational response. When corporations, states, and national leaders try to cause fracture, to politicize the crisis, and to commodify its solution, the Director General of the World Health Organization cautions us to maintain unity for our survival. But unity is not always at the forefront of market competition, including standardized testing, productivity measures, and, and standardized rankings. Testing students across the OECD countries, the incoming PISA Assessment for Creativity Thinking will roll out next year in 2021, with results to be published in December 2022. It's been called both controversial and imperfect, but it will profoundly impact the way creativity is taught and valued in education systems worldwide. In whatever way you construct your list of 21st century skills, you'll always come across creativity in some form or other, said the head of the PISA program for the OECD. He stressed, future jobs are likely to pair computer intelligence with creative skills, adding, quote, the dilemma for educators is now that routine cognitive skills, skills that are easiest to teach and easiest to test, are also exactly the kind of skills that are easiest to digitize, automate, and outsource. PISA is an incredibly powerful driver of education strategies in countries around the world, but it's still a standardized test. The Lego Foundation, like many other transnational corporations, believes that the PISA test will build clarity and place for creativity in schools, but particularly, they say, in recognizing play as a critical way to enhance learning and skill development. But what does play have to do with standardized tests like PISA? Well, both my own work and my research lab, Creative Agency in Melbourne, chart how individual experience now needs to expand into a more linked up relationship between macro and micro notions of creativity, not just as an individual trait or skill set, but through a creative ecology. With initiatives like the PISA assessment and changing national curricula, the macro of creative education is clear but the micro of creative, of creative education continues to fail that goal at both the individual and collective level. It's a failure, I've argued before, of communication, but also a structural one. Compulsory education is still not taking a sufficiently systems approach to making lasting structural change in creative terms. Vlad Glavino's Sociocultural Manifesto for Advancing Creativity Theory and Research from last year claims that creativity will become a necessity for the dignity and even survival of the human species. He reminds us of two key points that one, creative action is at all times relational. And two, that creativity is fundamental for society. So. What might creative relational response look like? Well, many scholars, including Jonathan Wyatt, Brian Masumi, Aaron Manning, and, and Rosie Bradati, have theorized a notion of post-human subjectivity or a creative relational approach to global sustainability. Creative relational approaches consider how the relational, including both human and more than human actants, work for social and environmental justice and sustainability and in ways that can help us cope with the complex and often painful challenges of the contemporary world, including the current global pandemic. Manning and Masumi have also considered ways to keep the relational going under increasingly global economies and how collectively produced techniques can be disseminated outward into participants' respective home environments and ecologies in ways that are unique to each context like Chen's approach to keeping both the macro and micro in conversation across cultural and creative divides in his book, Asia as Method, a creative relational ecology celebrates 
individual strengths and the creative collectivity. And schools, like pandemics, urgently need this set of shared skills and attitudes, not just for economic or academic success, but for global survival and true sustainability. Perhaps as Wyatt Pradati and others help us see, relationality is the new productivity. <laughs> or maybe it's always been, maybe it's the old productivity because things happen, work, love, joy, through the relational. Even one might argue standardized testing is a relational exercise. We're always already part of larger communities of practice. We just need to remember it. And sometimes even terrible challenges like COVID-19 help us remember our unity, as well as our need for creativity and creative adaptation. They remind us that we're all part of a creative relational ecology that we must now help sustain. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the conference.